Hey folks, welcome back to KEI Fabrication. I can't wait to show you in this video everything we had to do to get this far. So the main reason why I wanted to pull the rear end out is the first thing I need to do is cut all the old brackets off. They're single shear, they're torch cut, um, and I want to do a better job of it. So I want to do that on both sides. And the other thing is on this particular wheel, the wheel cylinder is at like 2 o'clock. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to index the axle tube there on the flange. Uh, one rotation of the bolt pattern and that should bring this closer to top dead center similar to the one on the passenger side so step one cut all the brackets off step two undo the flange bolts take it apart clean it reseal it put it back together indexed up to the new position then I can start laying out some cardboard templates uh, for the bracket design for the rear suspension. So I got the heaviest part of the brackets ground off. I still got some uglies on the underside of the tube on both sides. I've ground it down so there's just a touch of the welds left and then I'll get on there with a flapper wheel rather than getting too aggressive with the big boy going here. It's uh, over 90 degrees. I'm drenched in sweat. Uh, I've been at it for probably close to two hours just grinding. And cutting so uh, I'm gonna take a break and get a cold glass of ice water so I did all the heavy grinding of the what I could reach with the rear end in that position with the big boy grinder now I'm gonna hit it with the flapper disc just to take the rest of the remaining welds down and then I'm gonna flip the rear end and do the same thing on the other side
All right, so all the old brackets are cleaned off of the housing and the axle tubes are cleaned up all the way to the middle. And I'm going to use the wire wheel uh, to shine up the center section which is made out of aluminum and eventually I'm going to paint that um, with a like an aluminum metallic paint just because it's so difficult to get aluminum to shine. So I'm going to clean that up and then once I'm done making the big mess then I will take the axle tube off and re-index the backing plate um, for the driver's side and uh, then we can start fabricating some brackets and uh, tacking them on the rear end. Here we go. I got uh, the bottom portion of it wire brushed as good as I could with the wheel. And I've got all the souvenirs to prove it. It's 90 plus degrees in here and I was doing good till the sun came out so I'm going to stop for a few minutes and get a cold glass of ice water. folks if you're still with me the reason why I had to grind the brackets off of this axle tube was first of all they were bent and I'm not sure that they were in a position that uh, was favorable to making traction going around corners uh, and the other thing is when they welded the axle brackets on the, as I mentioned before, what got us into this or down this path was the wheel cylinder was at like 2 o'clock. Now the rear end is upside down, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take all of these bolts off and I'm going to index it one set of bolt holes and that should get the wheel cylinder closer to top dead center. So let's do that. I've never had one of these apart before. I'm assuming if I take all these bolts off. Uh, this axle tube will come free. I've got the housing supported by the strap here. So let's see how we make out. So just so I don't forget, I'm going from here to here. So what we're going to do while we have this thing apart is I'm going to wire brush all of this uh, and I have to clean it with great clean, put some black RTV and then put it back together. So you can see that axle tube is actually pretty thick. I think it's a quarter inch wall, which kind of makes up for the small diameter. So back in the day, you know, this was revolutionary compared to a factory stock 
axle food, but nowadays uh, it's super heavy duty. You know, a lot of the tubes and bells are completely made out of aluminum as the technology progressed. So, pretty neat stuff. So one of the things I noticed was that there's a seal um, on the that bell here and that is supposed to seal on the axle and that seal is to try to prevent gear oil from climbing up the axle tube. So one of the things I noticed when I took the passenger side apart was the brakes were loaded with oil. So now that I see that there is a seal in there, I don't think I have any choice but to disassemble the other side and um, probably try to get a part number off of that seal and see if I can replace them both just for um, a safety precaution. The last thing I want to do is get this thing all together and find out that because it's always turning left, slinging the oil to the right that first of all it's leaking all over the place and creating a hazard uh, for any other competitor on the track even if it's just a vintage exhibition event and you know or it would stop whoever's driving the car from participating because of the leak and the danger is ruining another brand new set of brake pads so a little bit of a delay, take a look at it and uh, see what's going on. The fact that there is a seal here really does eliminate the need to put uh, RTV or something on that. So uh, I may refrain from that um, just so this gets a good metal to metal bearing surface when the bolts are torqued up. So. All right, back to the drawing board. So one noticeable difference is this particular seal is completely different than the other one. So maybe that's why it leaked. Uh, it's not designed to do what it's doing. Uh, not really sure. So we'll have to uh, investigate that a little further. In case you're wondering what type of quick change this is, this is a very early manufacturer of this style rear end and it's a safety racing equipment company in uh, Eau Claire, Michigan. Uh, so, you know, I know Franklin was a popular one and a couple of other different ones, but um, I'm going to pop these seals out, see if there's any numbers on them at all, check the fit on the axle, take some measurements, maybe I can cross them over, we'll see. But uh, as much as I didn't want to go this deep, obviously I'm going to be uh, as precautionary as I can. Well, we got to go in deeper, I'm trying to get the seal out. I ruined it and I realized that the seal actually goes in from the back side of this belt. So. Here we go. I'll be. I'm gonna drive the seal up in that direction. And uh, I guess the benefit of this is I can get an idea of the shape of the ring and pinion. And I can give you folks a peek at what the inside of a quick change looks like. So let me get right side up here.
All right, so obviously the drive shaft connects here. This lower shaft goes all the way through to a bearing and then a um, spur gear inside here. And that gear engages with another gear that's connected to the pinion, which you can see right here, that drives the ring. The beauty of this is you set your ring for ring and pinion ratio for the range of tracks um, that might work for you and then you can get the different diameter gears or teeth number and interchange them accordingly to change the gear ratio for whatever tracks you're running on so um, so you can see that I'm turning this drive shaft the input and it's turning the gear out here under this cover which rotates the pinion which rotates the ring gear so I'll be able to count the teeth uh, be able to wipe some of this grime out but, and then I'll take a real close look at what the shape of the ring and pinion is and the bearings now this thing turned over um, you know like smooth as silk so it doesn't mean it's okay but at least I got eyes on the inside of it. I'm sure this cover hasn't been off in 55 years. So um, anyway, now we know what it looks like. Now I, gotta, I have no choice but to find a seal that's going to work for this and do the same for the other side. Didn't want to go this deep, but uh, just like everything else, sometimes you got to. Oh, I knocked the seal out, and sure enough, there's a number on it. So I'm going to have to write that down, take some measurements to make sure this seal is the right one for the application, or at least the sizes it's supposed to fit, and see if I can hunt for them. Okay, so I've gone in this deep, I figured I'd better pull the cover off and inspect the condition of the bearings and the cover plate and the spur gears inside the quick change. So, as I tried to explain before, the drive shaft is connected to the lower input shaft that goes all the way through the housing, and then this gear rides on this one, this is connected to the pinion, and they call it quick change because these gears just pull off and whatever track you're racing at based on whatever your ring and pinion is you can adjust your gear ratio so you can run the optimum gear for the RPM of your engine and try and stay in top gear in your transmission because that reduces the parasitic drag um, and when you're putting all the power through the transmission you're putting it in the, through the strongest set of gears which is one to one. So um, the good news is, is the gears look really, really good. Um, I'm going to count these up. The as I heard, I hopefully mentioned before, the ring gear and the pinion ratio is 411. And with this, you can see it's underdriven because it's got the smaller gear on the input shaft. So. It's multiplying the uh, gear ratio, and as it turns out, it's about point, uh, 5.9 to 1 based on the revolutions of the drive shaft um, and the revolution of the axle. So I'm going to count these up so I know exactly what it is, and uh, I'm also going to measure the and count the number of teeth on the input shaft and the pinion shaft so if I go to a swap meet or something and I see a set of gears that might work um, based on some calculations I can pick them up all right I'm gonna wash this out really good count the teeth up do some measurements I'm gonna clean all of these threads up real good 
and wash it out with some brake parts cleaner, spray some gear oil back in there, and get ready to button this up. So I took it apart, cleaned it out, and I only put a couple of bolts temporarily to put the covers on to keep the dust out and uh, I need to order the seals for the end caps, the axle seals. I was able to find seals uh, based on the, the number on the original seal um, and the, um, the part number is a Chicago Rawhide number and uh, eventually became CR seals and then they were taken over by SKF. Well SKF has a really good bearing and seal search engine on their website and I plugged in the number sure enough it came up that it was superseded by another part number and they're readily available so I've got those on the way and I'm going to flip it over and kind of do everything I did to this side, prep the gasket surfaces. I took all the studs out, cleaned all of the threads in the center section which are all helicoiled and put a little bit of blue Loctite on the studs and I'm going to order all new uh, AN washers and nylock nuts to go on the end caps or the end bells and the differential cover um, just because they're all mismatched and the threads are in terrible condition the studs are excellent but the nuts are just beat up so uh, I'm gonna make a McMaster car order and put all that in there at once and I'm also going to order the correct size 7 16 bolt that goes into the end bell that holds the axles on because those are all different sizes as well and they had washers to shim them up I'm not sure if they were bottoming out in the holes or not so I'm going to order the correct bolts for that get all that on the way um, they're only a couple days out from McMaster Car so I'm going to flip it over take the other cap off do the same thing with the studs and lock tight them and pop the seal out of the other side just in preparation for when the new seals come in I can button this up once that's done then I'm gonna focus on the backing plates and the axle tubes and start fabricating some rear end brackets so when it's all together I can start attaching the brackets to hold the rear end under the car
Okay, so if you remember, the whole reason why I brought this over here was to index this wheel cylinder by loosening these eight bolts, rotating it once, and also to cut the brackets off. And the brackets were actually utilized in the vehicle and welded on with this in the wrong place. Well, when I disassembled this and I pulled it apart, I saw that there was a seal in there. And I said, well, it's probably a good idea to change it. This car is always turning left and the oil is always trying to be slung down and out the right side axle tube so I figured I'd better take a look at the seal on that side and as it turns out I found that not only was the seal bad because when I retrieved this rear end literally out of the woods the right side brake shoes uh, and everything inside the drum was completely covered in oil so I already knew that that seal was bad something that had to be addressed. What I also found out was is the wrong seal was in there. It was for the wrong diameter axle. And I think in the 11th hour, slapping this thing together before a race, they found whatever was available. And they actually put a seal that was designed for a one and a quarter inch diameter axle when the axle is in fact one and three eighths so I'm thinking they just said well it's close enough it'll wear itself in they probably got away with it for a while uh, however eventually it did lead to filling the axle tube up with oil and contaminating the brakes so new seals in place uh, completely disassembled it inspected everything found out what the ring and pinion ratio is as well as the gear ratio in the back uh, if you recall, it has a 411 ring and pinion, and the gears in the back multiply the ratio, and it is about somewhere around uh, 580 to 1, uh, which would allow you to run third gear or top gear, the one to one in the transmission, on a third mile uh, paved oval. So. Um, all right, so the thing is all back together. I managed to get the backing plates all cleaned and primed. The axles are ready for new brackets, so it's time to lift this thing up, swing it around to the back of the car, and put it in position and use it as a fixture to locate the bracketry that's going to hold this thing in the car. Okay, so it's ready to go back in the car, however I have a lot of work, preliminary work to do to get ready to put it in. I've got some spring hangers and some jack and bolts and things like that that I'm going to put in, then slide this in, put it in place, use it as a fixture to locate everything else. So I'm going to call it a day. And uh, the garage is clean and swept, and things are in pretty good shape, so should be able to get right back at it tomorrow. <laughs>